Hello and welcome to the Rabbit Hole Show. On this episode, we shall be talking with Gifford Blyton Roberts, the creator of the Dynamic Rodent. All right. So I I did all my reading last night before I went to bed. How about you, Charlie? <laughs> you re- read the comic? Yeah, I read it um, uh, this week. Because I was doing other projects and I managed to fit it in, yeah. And I was really enjoy it. Was um, it's very interesting this this comic, by the way. Yes, I'd like to ask a few questions. But how did it come around? You know, how did you come up with the story? Well, let me start off with how I came up with the character. And I don't know if you can see it on screen, but here's the original drawing of Dynamic Rodent. From uh, way back when I was in elementary school, God. so the the start <laughs> the comic all that whole thing started when I was a little kid and I was trying to draw Yosemite Sam. Oh. Couldn't figure out how to draw Yosemite Sam. Tried to draw a raccoon instead. Couldn't figure out what a raccoon looked like. So I was like, I'll just say it's a rodent. I'll put a cape. I created a superhero, and then I was like, I'll call him Dynamic Rodent. <laughs> So that's how the character was created. Oh, uh, because you you create uh, comics uh, previously. Well, I've written the script years ago, like back about twenty years ago. Um, unfortunately, my father passed away a couple of years ago, so I've got a little bit of spending money that I was able to use for a comic, like a hire an artist. But uh, yeah, uh, the I'd like to also point out a couple of things. The if you look at the first page of the comic, there's the, and I think the last page, there's the billboard that says Peck in Kentucky. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was my hometown's original name. Uh, Paducah, Kentucky was originally Peckin. Okay. And you'll see a bunch of Kentucky flags throughout the comic, too. I don't know if you all noticed that. Yeah, I did. Yeah. And I was wanting it to be in the background, but not really. And there's one there. <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah, I like. You know what? I really like the artwork in this one. Yeah, it's I'm really great. I'm impressed with how Millie Lee, Lee did on this. Macarena get- Duarte and her uh, husband, I think, what's his name? Geronimo. I know, I've only dealt with him at the end, but Geronimo Caldora doing the coloring did an amazing job too. I want to shout them out as well. Actually, the last few pages that were a real rush to get done for in time for the convention that I was going to, to debut it. Yeah, we we know all about uh, rushing for conventions. We we I don't know <clears throat> if, if you know this, but but uh, Rabbit Hole Studios also produces comics, and there's been times where the ongoing joke is we're we're down to the wire always. Have you got any other comics coming out after this one? Yes, the second the follow up story is coming out, and it'll be debuted in July. And it's going to be a lot longer. Uh, it, so far, it's at seventy pages. Wow! So, wow! Because this one was roughly what four, um, forty pages. Well, oh, that's what the printer said, but it's thirty six. You have to have like the other pages, thirty six or thirty seven. Because yeah. you've got the blank pages at the back. Mm-hmm. And I was meant for the my own little college cartoon I did of Dynamic Rodent to be on the back cover. But the way they printed it, they did an ad on the back cover. So it's almost on the back cover. But I don't know if you all noticed that one as well. Yeah. Was it... The... It was a nonsensical story <laughs> that I just did making fun of some inside joke and when i was in a call in college okay where the guy's wearing a oh, trumpet yeah the, the black and white would get dynamic rodent using a cheese on a st- uh, string and using a plunger <laughs> okay <laughs> so Sorry. what did you guys like most about my comic well of course the artwork was excellent what i like about the comic is the storyline and the questions that need to be answered especially in the parts where he's going past the factory joey is and it, there's an explosion. He then turns into a mouse. And I was wondering how that happened. 
Also, when he goes back to his house, instead of going to the hospital, his dad doesn't question him that he's a mouse. He doesn't say anything. So there's little parts, there's little um, parts in the story that need answering. Is why the sequel will be perfect, and I can't wait for it. Yeah, I had a theory, really. Oh, this There's might... a lot that I'm setting up in this story, too. So your yeah. theory may be true. What is it? Right, the theory is, because his mom passed away, none of this, uh, he didn't really turn into a, a rodent. He was just um, using his imagination to escape the reality of his mom's death. Interesting. That's my idea, anyway, because his dad never questioned when he turned well that's also because well there's an in-story reason for that as you said i'm not confirming or denying that there is a reason for that but it's also outside of the story itself is a commentary kind of on oh he even mentions in there somewhere well that makes sense no one notices any difference until i put on my costume because like they can hide their identities by using a like a mask over the eyes or taking off glasses and no one notices makes sense I don't, I don't remember what page that was on but yeah that's kind of my making fun of comics like in general like with hiding superhero identities i, I like that i like the sort of rodent super <laughs> hero factor of it though so and he has no superpowers and he's just been in a horrible accident he's like no no hospital I yeah. think the most reasonable thing to do is be a superhero. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to be a superhero. That's what I'm going to do. There's questions on what's going to happen, but I'm really interested in what's going to happen next. Okay. This is how much I've gotten written. Oh, my gosh. Wow. So how long did that take to write, to come up with these this, this whole um, concept? Well, well, the whole... I didn't start actually writing down a lot of the story, so I had the actual ending in mind. Ah, okay. I have something to work towards because I've been warned not to do that. Because if you don't know where you're heading, you get you meander, mm -hmm. and it gets confusing and stupid. Which being stupid is never something I shy away from in dynamic rodent. <laughs> but <laughs> Trust yeah, me, I I'm think not. I get away with more jokes and stupid scenes because he's a kid than a lot of stories could. So um, you're a big, are you a big comic fan normally, or is just it just um, came to you one day? Yeah. Uh, I haven't really. Okay, I mean, I'm trying to think of any new ones that I've read. Okay, one I really like I found online called uh, Shotgun Samurai. I don't know if you guys have read that. No. I, I haven't even really heard of it. The well, name kind of like, sounds like familiar. an independent self-published. I think it started out as a webtoon. It's really interesting. Uh, I like that. It's got a silly little ramen cook dude and a samurai who uses a shotgun. I That's also it. like Naruto, Usagi Ojimbo, Ninja Turtles. I see Green a lantern. I do see that sort of Ninja Turtles in the, the actual costume of the rodent. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. It, it's kind of, as I said, it, it is influenced somewhat, but you got to remember the mask part came from trying to draw a raccoon. <laughs> Playing Yosemite Sam when I was a kid on um, that original drawing. I, I don't even bother but with Yeah, John. <laughs> that was a huge fan of Ninja Turtles when I was a kid, so that was definitely inspired by that. I think more influence came from something else, though, which you guys... Well, actually, one of you, I think, is English. You might have heard of it. Danger Mouse. Yes, Danger Mouse. That's it. <laughs> wow, I'm surprised you know Danger Mouse. I was going to mention Danger Mouse I watched Mouse him as on well. Nickelodeon as a kid. Oh, I, I used to love Danger Mouse. I, I can guarantee you there's more influence probably from a Danger Mouse on the original costume. If you look at the symbol, it's kind of similar, too. I'm waiting for a Penfold character in your comic. Definitely waiting on that. <laughs> when I went to England as a kid, my dad, I don't, um, I'm not sure if this came across too clearly, but in Joey's dad is an attorney, like my dad was. Um, my dad went to the American Bar Association meeting when I was a kid, and, and it was held in London. 
and we went and toured, um, you know, took my mom and me, and we toured around England and Scotland, and I, and my dad was specifically wanting to see the Baker Street address where uh, Sherlock Holmes was, and I wanted to see the mailbox outside of it, because that was where Danger Mouse was. I was so upset that the mailbox wasn't there. <laughs> I know. Well, people get upset they didn't see where Sherlock Holmes lived. The look I was going for originally to have a quasi-cartoony mouse boy character in a more realistic setting was just even more ridiculous, and I liked that idea better. It's kind of like the English old uh, style of comics. It does remind me of um, Danger Mouse, sort of that like, style. Yeah, that style, yeah. definitely. Yeah, uh, that's why I liked it. That's why I was drawn to it, probably. Leading from that, uh, where can people buy it at? You can go to a website called IndiePlanet.com, I believe. Okay. And you can get a for five dollars. You can order the print version, or I think it's ninety nine cent for, for the digital version. Night. Nice. Yeah. Uh, so, what would you say I should work on as a writer? Would you reckon, Andrew? I'll go. Let me go. Yeah, go work on. on as a writer. I I like the way that the story like ended. The way mm -hmm. that it started, I found pretty confusing like as, yeah, as charlie I said i, I just, looking back yeah other than that like i i found it pretty pretty entertaining at the end Part uh, of it was on purpose but i i didn't mean for it, it should have been tighter though there i wanted to leave some mysteries and my uncle just texted me or my cousin just texted me good luck on the interview <laughs> i do uh, like, i do like the questions i i'm still wondering things yeah but yeah. a, that's a good thing. It means you can continue the story. Yeah. You can even There's add a lot that's something set different. Up that I'm not talking about that I actually set up in that first story. So that was one of the reasons it was so hard to do. Plus, it was my first comic and Millipede's first comic to draw. Well, I think you've done an excellent job on your first comic. Yeah, so, so do I. It's, it's you should for a first comic. Give yourself yeah. a clap. <laughs> Rodents all around the world will be proud. <laughs> I like the storyline, the the writing. Yes, some bits were a bit confusing, but it leads to other things maybe in the future. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I, the art, the coloring, the the sort of text wasn't too confusing either. And mm -hmm. yeah, I I recommend everyone have a read of it. So we'll put a yeah. link down below to so you know they get their copy. It's not expensive either. What five dollars? That's like three pounds or something. I want to say how much I appreciated the interview opportunity. It was great having you on the show, and hopefully we'll see you for the sequel. So people, check out the link below and get your copy. And I'll see you, and Andrew will see you, and we'll see you soon. <laughs>